Hello, so this is a follow-up to um, the frequency counter teardown I've done just recently. Um, I thought before putting it to back together, I'll try and solve this power supply problem because I really want uh, the power switch problem, sorry. I really want to um, put a hard switch in here. And I've, I've, I've thought of various um, uh, solutions from completely replacing the switch mode uh, and putting a linear supply in there and a much smaller transformer so I can have a, a kind of controlled and safe soft, soft switch that way. But actually looking at it and looking at the construction, uh, I thought, you know, re really all I need to do is go back to basics. So I'm going to try and um, modify this um, to have a hard power switch. So using something like this, which is a very uh, traditional uh, uh, hard power switch. Um, if you look inside the, um, inside the frequency counter here, this, this is where the switch is here. And that switch is soldered to uh, is is soldered on the on the board of um, the that holds the display, just in here. And uh, there is there is a kind of gap behind it. So what I'm thinking about doing is really really simple modification. I'm going to make a fa fashion some kind of bracket here to hold this switch uh, again pretty much against the chassis. Let's see if I can get a better camera angle on that to show you what I mean. Uh, you know, some, some, something, uh, let's perhaps go from this, this angle here. So, some, something like this, holding, holding the switch in place there, and then use something as simple as um, a, piece of, a piece of stiff wire from a coat hanger to, um, to connect the button through to the switch. So I think all I need to do is uh, remove the switch, desolder it from the board, and then build build a bracket up that will um, will allow the switch to you know I'll have to navigate around the board and come back through, so creating uh, the the appropriate shaped uh, piece of wire uh, fixed to that switch some uh, fixed to that button sorry somehow, and then obviously fixed to the switch this end somehow. Then the wiring is for, it should be really straightforward. Uh, it's two pairs of wires coming directly from the um, back here. I'll simply uh, disconnect these from the IDC connector. Um, bring, bring the two power wires back to the switch, and then two returns back on here. Um, sorry, bring, bring the two wires from here, and then another pair back uh, to simply um, um, put it in series with the with the mains straight into the power supply. Now, what I did try um, to prove that it would work is if I leave this switch switched on, and then I put the uh, power cable into the back, the the um, frequency counter does switch off and does power up perfectly fine. I've tried that a few times. So there shouldn't be any issue with um, removing the switch, linking out the connections, uh, as, I, as we saw in the last video, it's a very simple pair, pair of um, connections. It's a two-pole switch. Linking out those connections and then putting in the mains power switch. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into the garage and I'm going to get some scraps of uh, aluminium or, or whatever I need to make up a, an appropriate bracket and see if I can fashion the components I need basically to make this modification. Okay, so I've, um, I've made up a, a small bracket like this, just so uh, I've used a, a piece of angled um, aluminium. Um, I've drilled, drilled a hole which is suitable for mounting the switch with its, with its appropriate mounting um, points. And um, I've drilled two holes in this side, and it's just fortuitous that the chassis, um, in order to not make it much, it's already drilled, obviously for some other option, I'm not quite sure what it was, but uh, this bracket will, um, will fix basically to those two, uh, those two holes there, but obviously around the other side. Um, so next thing to do is to mount this switch, um, probably and do the wiring, I think. And then um, once I've, I've done that, I'll um, construct the, uh, I'll, I'll take apart the front panel, remove the switch and uh, construct the next part of it. Okay, so here's the um, switch removed. That was a fairly painless exercise. I've also, uh, let me see if I can get this in focus here. Uh, I've linked out the switch, you can see. There you go, a couple of simple links uh, just, to, uh, just to bypass that switch. So now in normal circumstances, as soon as the mains is applied, that should, uh, that should power up. Next thing I need to do is, um, is fit, fit the uh, switch onto the chassis here and wire that in. Okay, so the, uh, the bracket's fitted. Uh, you can see that I've used uh, very short screws because, uh, because of the way that it uh, works out. I've tried to align the switch with the position of the um, button on the front panel and uh, that gets very very close there but um, looking at it there's no interference it's, abs it's absolutely fine I've just disconnected the, um, 
the wires from the power connector here and um, the IEC connector. And this was strapped across the main. So um, this is a high frequency suppression cap uh, typically found uh, in, in RFI filters. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to leave it across the connector how it currently was. I'm going to leave it on the, the power supply side of the switch um, so that when the switch is switched off, uh, mains is completely isolated. That, that just feels uh, more, more appropriate to me. So that's, that's what I'm going to do with that. Okay, so I've um, wired the switch up. I fitted the switch onto the bracket. Um, I fitted the um, high frequency filter cap on the, on the back of the switch there. Um, I've run the, run the wires. Now I've run the wires this way. Originally I was going to run them this way. The problem is they'll run right across the back of this fan here and that will um, uh, cause a blockage of the airflow. So I've run it this way. Um, just so uh, it remains tidy and it doesn't it doesn't uh, get too f too far um, or too near any of the front end electronics. Uh, so I think that'll be absolutely fine. That looks that looks fine. Just made the connections here. Um, as I see, the, the, the switch is um, physically fitted, so uh, that all looks good now. So the next thing to do is to um, get the um, get the front of the uh, switch connected. I've started with this, so I'm going to work on getting that. Um, getting that fitted now and see how we go. Okay, so I've made up um, some bits. The first problem is um, this, obviously, this, this button here is uh, designed to, I wish I can get you to get that focused, is designed to fit over a square um, right, and of course we've got this round uh, piece, of, piece of wire, uh, it clearly doesn't fit. So the solution I came up with that was uh, simply cutting a, a sliver of um, 1.6 millimeter FR4 uh, PCB and uh, getting that to fit into one side, just like this, which itself is quite a tight fit. And then pushing the, sorry, I'm just trying to get this to focus, uh, pushing that into the, into the switch actually gives it quite a tight tight fit. Now I don't particularly want to glue this but I do want it to uh, because I want it to I want the mod to be reversible. So and I just need to put that around so that's that's that. Then um, that that'll sit in the front here now protruding out and I've cut this to the exact length so this butts up. I don't know if you can see that but that butts up here gets that operation and the way I'm going to hold that still is I've taken some, one of these which is one of the uh, one of the one of the things you often see pushed into the end of these uh, so it's a simple bit of plastic now why, why have I got that well the first thing is it's it is it slides snugly over this it's quite a tight fit um, so and I've create put a hole in the the back of it and this is quite a tight fit so with all that all that hanging together like that it should eventually and assuming I've got all the lengths right um, it's uh, that's a, a, a nice solid uh, mechanical construction so what I'm going to do now is um, fit that into the front panel put it all together and see how that see that hangs together Okay, so the front panel's all back on now. It's all back together. If you, I'm not sure how you can, how well you can see this, but we'll see. I'll actuate the switch now. And you can see it operating in there. The discoloration on that wire is the fact that the the coat hanger uh, has a coating on it, and as I've used the pliers to to shape it, it's just taken that coating off. So I'm not really not worried about that at all. Uh, you can see it operating there. Everything's nice and solid. Nothing's going to fall out or move. It's it's all it's all you know, every, everything's a nice uh, interference fit. Um, the only one problem is here if the screws pr protrude, um, if the screws met on on this mounting point here pr protrudes in, uh, it will just nick that. Um, I couldn't quite get it past that. Um, so I'll just have to be mindful of that. I probably could uh, rebend it and reshape it, but I think I'm not, I'm not planning to use that, so I think that would be okay. Uh, just looking at the front, you can see the switch looks nice and natural. Uh, there's, no, there's no particular 
Um, mouthful. Um, and it, oh, there you go. And it operates. And it's operating without any any errors. All right. So the only thing I need to, uh, without any um, um, interference. There's no mechanical interference there at all. That's that's operating really nicely. Right. So what I'm going to do now is just uh, put mains on it again and just test that uh, test that it actually does the job. So it goes without saying uh, when it's switched off it's completely isolated and the fan's no longer running. All right, so I'll say that's, uh, that's job done. I'll just put it back together now and give it one final test. Okay, so that's the mod done. Uh, it was pretty straightforward, took a couple of hours to do. Uh, well, it really wasn't that hard. Uh, well worth doing, I'd say, that modification. Uh, if you're going to have one of these on your bench or you're having them, uh, you know, uh, and you want to keep it powered up and keep it up on a shelf somewhere, uh, then doing that modification definitely makes a lot of sense. Anyway, for now um, it's, it's finished, I can put it back on the bench and, and actually use it. Uh, at least now I can leave it plugged in, which is, which is good, and this is uh, al aligned with the rest of the equipment. What I can't understand is that mod was so simple and so straightforward. Why didn't HP do that themselves? It just doesn't make sense. It would definitely be um, more sensible to, to do it like that. I can't see any technical reason why they wouldn't have done it. I did think that possibly the oven, crystal oven oscillator option might be permanently powered up. Um, I, I, I don't know. I haven't looked at the, the diagrams to see if that's the case or not. So that could be one possible explanation. But, um, you know, e even then, I mean, if you, you know, if you want to stabilise it, you only need to turn it on before you use it. All right, so thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, if you enjoyed the mod, please give it a thumbs up and, uh, and I'll catch you next time.